Sometimes in your applications, you might be dealing with a list of objects. For example, the list of products in a shopping cart or the list of colors the user has selected. In situations like that, you use an array to store that list. Let me show you how. So here I'm gonna declare another variable called selected colors. Note that I'm using a meaningful name. I don't have SC or some other weird name, selected colors. Now we can initialize this and set it to an empty array. So these square brackets are what we call array literal and they indicate an empty array. Now we can initialize this array and add a couple of items like red and blue. Let's log this on the console. So console, the log selected colors. Save the changes. So here's our array with two elements. We can expand that. Note that each element has an index and that determines the position of that element in the array. So the index of the first element is zero and the index of the second element is one. So if you wanna access an element in an array, we use this index. Here's how. For example, let's say you wanna display the first element in this array. You use the square brackets and then specify the index. Save the changes and now we have red. Now, earlier I told you that JavaScript is a dynamic language. So the type of variables can change at runtime. The same principle applies to our arrays. So the lengths of arrays, as well as the type of objects we have in an array are dynamic, they can change. So on line two, we initialize this array with two elements, right? Now, on line three, we can add another element to this array, so the array will expand. So let's say selected colors of two, that means the third item in this array is going to be green. Now, let's display this array on the console. So we have an array with three elements. So the length is dynamic, it can change. Also, the type of objects we have in this array is dynamic. So unlike other programming languages where every item or every object in the array should have the same type, in JavaScript, we can store different types in an array. So we can make the last element a number. Save the changes. Now we have two strings and a number. So the objects in the array, as well as the size of the array are dynamic. Now, technically an array is an object. So just like the personal object we defined in the last lecture, it has a bunch of key value pairs or properties that we can access using the dot notation. Let me prove that to you. So here on the console, let's look at the type of selected colors. So the type of this array is an object. So an array is an object in JavaScript. So here on line four, we can look at the properties of this array or this object using the dot notation. Look, these are all the properties defined in arrays in JavaScript. So every time we declare an array using square brackets, that array will automatically receive these properties. We didn't explicitly define them. They're just somehow magically inherited from somewhere else. You're going to learn about that later when we talk about prototypes. Now in this lecture, we're going to look at one of these properties, that is the length property. This property returns the number of items or elements in an array. So save the changes. You can see we have three elements in this array. Now later in the course, we have a comprehensive section about arrays. You will learn about all kinds of operations you can perform on arrays. For now, all I want you to take away is that an array is a data structure that we use to represent a list of items. In the category of reference types, we have learned about objects and arrays. Now let's take a look at functions. Functions are one of the fundamental building blocks in JavaScript. A function is basically a set of statements that performs a task or calculates a value. Let me show you a couple of examples. So I'm gonna declare a function using the function keyword. Now we need to give it a name, let's call that greet. After that, we need to add parentheses. That's part of the syntax for declaring functions and then curly braces. Now what we have here inside the curly braces is what we refer to as the 
body of this function. And this is where we add all the statements to define some kind of logic in our application. For example, the logic for this function should be to display a message on the console. So here we can add console.log hello world. Now note that here we have a statement, so we terminate it with a semicolon. But when we are declaring a function, we don't need to add semicolon at the end because we are not declaring it like a variable like this. Okay? This is a function declaration, right? So now we have a function. We can call this function like this. So we add the name of the function and parentheses again, and then semicolon to indicate that this is a statement. Save the changes. Now we have hello world on the console. But that's pretty boring. Why would we do this? Let me show you how to make this more interesting. Our functions can have inputs, and these inputs can change how the function behaves. So let's say instead of displaying hello world, we want to display the name of the person here, like hello John. So we can add a variable here in between parentheses. We refer to this variable as a parameter. So this greet function has one parameter called name. And essentially name is like a variable that is only meaningful inside of this function. So inside of this function, we can work with this name variable, but it will not be accessible outside of this function. Now name is an input to this function. So instead of displaying hello world, we can display hello, then add a plus here to concatenate two strings. So we can add name after. Now, when calling the great function, we need to pass a value for the name variable or name parameter more accurately. So we can pass John here. Now we refer to this as an argument. So John is an argument to the great function and name is a parameter of the great function. That's one of the things that a lot of programmers don't know. They don't know the difference between a parameter and an argument. So a parameter is what we have here at the time of declaration, but the argument is the actual value we supply for that parameter, okay? Now, let's save the changes. So we have hello John. Now, we can reuse this function, but with a different input. So we can copy this line here and change John to Mary. Save the changes. Now we have two different messages on the console. Now, a function can have multiple parameters. So here we can separate parameters using a comma. So let's add another parameter like last name. Now we can change our console.log, add a space here, and then display the last name. Now, when calling this great function, we should pass another argument for the last name, right? But let's see what happens if we don't do this. So I'm gonna save the changes, see what we got hello john undefined because as i told you before the default value of variables in javascript is undefined so because we did not pass a value for the last name by default it's undefined so i'm going to pass another argument here we separate them using a comma john smith and we don't need the second call to the greet function save the changes now we have hello john smith Now, there is a cleaner way to write this code on line three. All these concatenations are kind of ugly. They're getting in the way. Later in the course, I will show you how to use template literals to clean up this code. For now, don't worry about it. Let's look at another example of a function. So this function we have here is performing a task. So performing a task. This task is to display something on the console. But sometimes our functions might calculate something. So here is an example of a function that calculates a value. So again, function. Let's call this function square. This function should take a parameter. Let's call that number. Now we need to calculate the square of that number. That is number times number. Just basic math, right? Now we need to return this value to whoever is calling this function. For that, we use the return keyword. 
That's another reserved keyword. So you cannot have a variable called return. Okay. Now, instead of calling the great function, let's call the square function. So square, we pass two. Now this returns a value. So we can use that value to initialize a variable. For example, we can declare another variable called number and set it to a square of two. And then we can display that on the console. Save the changes. So we get four. Now, in this particular example, we don't necessarily have to declare a separate variable if all we want to do is to display the square of two on the console. We can exclude this variable declaration and simply pass square of two to console.log. So when the JavaScript engine executes this code, first it's going to call this function it would get a value and then pass that value to console.log. Let's save the changes and look, we still get four. Now I have a question for you. How many function calls do you think we have in this code? We have two function calls. Square of two is one function call. Let me delete this temporarily. But console.log is also another function call, right? Because here we have parentheses. So we're calling the log function, which is defined somewhere, and passing an argument. We can pass a simple string like hello, or we can pass an expression. That expression can be a call to another function like square of two. Okay, so this is the basics of functions. Again, later in the course, we have a comprehensive section about functions. For now, all I want you to take away is that a function is a set of statements that either performs a task or calculates and returns a value. A real world application is essentially a collection of hundreds or thousands of functions working together to provide the functionality of that application. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like this video, then give it a like. Share this video if you find out this video useful. If you think that if something is missing in this video, or you want us to cover some other content related to programming languages, technology or anything. Then do comment down. We will work on that, and don't forget to visit to our playlist section. You will find some interesting content there. Subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.